<laughs> See, I'm here to tell you because I, well, God told me, he said, there's more to their story. And when I started to look into that, I said, see, it wasn't enough for her to put her in, in the, another room that she had. She had to make another story in her home in order for him to go into it. Meaning the scene in your life is only a scene. It's not your story. That's right. Growing up, living with my parents and seeing not a lot of things, but hearing that my father was on drugs and different things like that, that was the scene of my story. When I was molested or I tried to kill myself, that was a scene in my story. It was not the end of my story. So many times we get caught up in the scenes of our story that we think that it's the end of our story. Tell your neighbors, say there's more to the story. There's more to the story. Now say, there's more to my story. See, sometimes you gotta personalize that. See, I think a lot of times we forget that our story does not end in this season. Yes, uh, yes, yes. We under we I think she said it, she had it actually a different song. It's interesting that she danced that because it's more to this after this. This is a temporary place. We're just passing through. Yes, yes. But the lady that I'm gonna talk about this morning, oh my goodness, she did something in me. She comes out of the book of Second Kings. 4, 8 through 37, and we're going to focus on these scriptures, and we're going to jump around back to um, chapter 8 after we do chapter 4, but in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 8 through 37, if you have it, you can stand. Second Kings 4, 8 through 37. Now I want you to say Shumite woman. Shumite woman. Shumite woman. woman. All right, let us read. It says, now it happened one day that Elijah went to Shuman, where there was a notable woman, and she persuaded him to eat some food, so it was so often he passed by, he would turn in there to eat some food. And she said to her husband, look now, I know that this is a holy man of God who passes by us regularly. Please let us make a small upper room on the wall <laughs> and let us put a bed in for him there and a table and a chair and a lampstand. And it will be whenever he comes to us, he can turn in there. And it happened one day that he came there and he turned into the upper room and lay down there. Then he said to Gehazi, his servant, call this Shumite woman. When he had her, he called, he had called her, she stood before him and he said to her, him, say now to her, look, you have been concerned for us. With all this care, what can I do for you? Do you want me to speak on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? She answered, I dwell among my own people. And he said, what then is it to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, actually, she has no son and her husband is old. So he said, call her. When he had called her, she stood in the doorway. Then he said, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. And he said, no, my Lord, man of God, do not lie to your maid servant. But the woman conceived and bore a son. When the appointed time had come, of which Elijah had told her, and the child grew, meaning she gave birth to a son. Now it happened one day that he went out to his father, to the reapers, and he said to his father, my head, my head. So he said to the servant, carry him to his mother. When he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat her on his knees till noon, and then he died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, meaning Elijah, the very room that her husband had created for the man of God. Shut the door upon him and went out. Then she called to her husband and said, please send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys that I may, uh, may run to the man of God and come back. 
And we're going to go ahead. You may be seated. Say, there's more to my story. Because if I would have gave up a long time ago, I would not be in this scene of my story. She said, we're going to build to the story. And we're going to allow this man of God to come in. And we're going to give him an offering, which is the bed, the lampstand and the chair, food of her very own house. She started another story in verse 10. The one thing she did not do is judge her story by the scene that she was in. She didn't judge her story. See, the scripture doesn't say it, but I could only imagine being a woman like her. I'm not barren, but I can imagine what she went through prior to this scene before her husband got old. She probably tried to have a couple kids and was told she could not have children because she was barren. So she remembered that scene, but she didn't want to take that scene into this scene. She said, money can't buy what I desire. I could, just, I could just imagine where she was at. A lot of people will step into the scene of your life thinking they know the whole story. But unfortunately, they only know the scene they're in. A lot of people will come into your life and try to tell you what your story is based off the scene that you're in. And they cannot. As you see, no one could tell her that she would bear a child except a man of God, which was connected to God. So ultimately, it came from God. She didn't say, oh, whatever. I'm... Actually, she said, don't lie to me. All I did was open up my house to you. Don't. And then the thing was that Elijah sent Gehazi to speak to her. But yet, <laughs> I believe she wanted Elijah. Yes, yes, yes. She said, let me get to Elijah. Yes. I don't need the servant. Mm -hmm. That's, right. That's why she said, man of God, don't lie to me. She pushed past Gehazi, and she went directly to God, which was the, the vessel that God was using, which was Elijah. So you got to be careful the advice that you're taking on the scene of your life because it can affect the story if you're not taking the right advice. The scene you are in is not your story. I say it again because I think a lot of us get caught up in our temporary feelings when we don't understand that those temporary feelings can affect the end of our story. If we're not careful, we can allow depression, anxiety, us questioning ourselves, and all these things can add and affect the end of our story. You think that where you're at is a pause, meaning it's done. You're done. That's This is your life right here. You're not going to get a better job. This is a layover. Yes. I couldn't stop the scene I was in even though I didn't like what it looked like. <coughs> mm -hmm. I couldn't say, my father's doing 20 plus years in prison, so I'm just going to be done with everything because my look on family is not what's happening. So I'm just going to give up on the scene. You don't have that control. Say more to my story. Do you know that it's more to your story? Amen. When I thought about this, sister, um, Tiffany said it this morning when she lost her job. I thought about that because I was like, wow, God, when you gave me this and you gave me her story, while I was writing this, I was thinking when she was on that scene of her life, it was a very dark place. 
very dark place for her. She'll tell you. And she thought that she wasn't going to get anywhere else. She had to look for other jobs. She went to other jobs. Nobody was being able to hire her. And when she did go, she was unhappy. But God was saying, I'm just setting you up for another scene. And the very job that she lost, she got it back. What if she would have gave up on that seat and depression would have took her over? Because we were hitting almost there, right? She took him. She put him in the very bed that her and her husband made and it's with their very hands. And she closed the door. I wonder why she didn't take him in her own room. Maybe because she knew that Elijah was not going to go to her room when he came back. Because she went back to Elijah and said, my son is dead. My son is dead. Meaning, my scene is dead. My scene is dead, Elijah. God, my scene is dead. My bills is packing up and things are happening in my life and I always feel alone. My scene is dead. And as you read the story, Elijah goes back and lays his body on the very dead body in the bed. And he blew in him. See, sometimes God got to come back and lay on you and blow and blow and blow and blow on the seat. When I was in that house with Pastor Leon and I closed that door and I said, I'm done. Did he get flustered? He took, he said, where's my daughter? Where's my daughter? Okay. And he went into that room and he opened that door and he said, oh, is that what we're going to do? And he started praying in tongues, I can remember. He was blowing on me. He was blowing on me. He said, you shall live. You shall live. You shall proclaim the works of the Lord. You shall live. You will not die. You will speak. You will prophetically speak. You will dance. This is what he said. He blew on me. And I sneezed seven times. Because that's what the man of God did. He blew on this child and he sneezed seven times. You see, sometimes you got to go to your children and you got to say, I know, baby, they make it fun of you, but I'm going to blow and tell you you're beautiful. Yes. I love you. Yes. The touch of your mother yes. restores your soul. Right. So that little boy don't like you, it's okay. That's right. This is what we go through. Mm -hmm. Come on, let's keep it real. That's our the wives want to give up. Our husbands got to be strong enough to blow in us. Yes. Even this morning, as I lay with my husband, I just held him and I cried as he slept. He opened his eyes and I'm crying because I wanted him to know I'm blowing on you. Every dead thing in you, everything that you're struggling with, I blow on you. I blow. My tears flow for you because I wanted him to know you're not doing this by yourself. I know the battle's tough. I know it's hard at times, but my tears are falling for you in prayer. We got to do that yes, yes. with it not expecting nothing yes. back. You cannot get to the resurrection without the crucifixion. Yes. Jesus had to die. He had to die. But they thought that was it, but that was a scene. As they whooped him, that's a scene. Mm -hmm. As they put him on the cross, that was a scene. Mm -hmm. As they took the nails and pierced his hands, that was a scene. Yes. That was a scene. As they took him off the cross and they're dragging him and everyone's laughing, he's sitting there like, that's a scene. Mm -hmm. When they put him behind the tomb and they closed the tomb up, that was a scene. That's right. Because he knew on the third day he would rise. Right. That's a scene. Right. That was a scene too. Yeah. 